Hi, welcome to Kiwana Talk. We're a public information program put together by people from the Dearborn and Kiwanis Club, help from students and faculty at Dearborn High School, my alma mater. Welcome to the longest running cable access program in the entire universe. My name is Gary Gardner once again, and today we're here at Dearborn High talking about radio, something near and dear to my heart, 50 plus years ago in this very room. The film program was started at Dearborn High. Richard Corvo was our first teacher is grown, developed, and come along. I morphed away from radio. We have a gentleman here today to talk about radio on a very special station, the great voice of the Great Lakes, uh, WJR, uh, but he is a part of that and an interesting person, Mr. Jack Crisula. Jack, welcome to the program. Gary, it's been an honor to be invited. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, Jack, and WJR, great station, amazing reach, amazing power, um, and uh, I don't know that you were always in radio. You had a life before radio, I, I guess. Where did you come from? How did you wind up in Detroit? I grew up on the south side of Chicago. My dad was a mailman. I took one programming course in college because that's all they had. I got a job with Illinois Bell. And then one day a guy called me, a consulting company. They had an opportunity in Detroit. Jack, we're going to open an office in Chicago right away. We'll move you back. And Gary, I'd never been on an airplane. I just wanted to go on an airplane. Came here. They hired me. I got a room on Yonker Street in Dearborn okay. for $13 a week, like an upper flat. That was 1972. And uh, the rest is history. rest is history. So you had, did you, and you obviously never moved back to Chicago. No, they never opened the office in Chicago. And... <laughs> Four years later, I started Decision Consultants, and over 26 years, we built it to 1,800 people, and we sold it in 2002. And then a few years later, a very, very good friend, the late, great Mike Feasy, president of WJR. Right. We were golfing one day. I had never been on the radio, never as a guest, yet alone a host. And Mike says, and I said, Mike, you need something positive on WJR. You got this Rush slime ball every day. That's what my dad called him. Sean Hannity, Dr. Laura, all this screaming, pounding on people. You need something positive. And he said, like what? And I said, you should have one show a week where you highlight one person, let them tell their story to inspire people. And he said, well, like who? Gary, I never said I should be the host. I was never on the radio. And I wrote down on a piece of paper, Ernie Banks, my hero, Dennis Archer, Eleanor Jositis, Senator McCain, Father Ted Hesburgh of Notre Dame. I didn't know these people, just people I admired. I wrote it on a piece of paper, sent it to him. He called me. He said, I love the idea, and I think you'd be great as the host. <laughs> That's how I got the gig. You know, I, I think he might have recognized the gift of gab and the personality that comes just, just is, is just omnipresent with you there, Jack. Well, we've had 980 shows, 980 guests, three Miss Americas, nine astronauts, 50 Hall of Famers, cardinals, governors, senators, and I've always said I'm not the host. I'm the beneficiary. To meet with these people ahead of time, dinner, go to their office, ask, you know, study up. It's amazing what's out there on the Google. Ask them about their life and find out things that aren't on the Google, and then to actually do a taping. Unbelievable. And I get to do that every week. I've had dinner, Gary, with three Miss Americas. With chaperones, I hope? <laughs> well, <laughs> now this last one, we're having dinner. And she says, Jack, you remind me so much of my grandpa. Okay. <laughs> Separate checks, okay. separate checks, yeah, there okay. You go. Yeah. Uh, it's just been a blessing. You know, one of the things that I think that I like about this program is I get to ask my guests questions that I'd like to know, but based on what they want to talk about, their life, their history, their business, their charity, their ideas, and those types of things. And to have a longer format, not just a, a, a three-minute you know, blip on, on, on a Fox News set, but a whole half hour here or a one hour in your case, that's a luxury that you don't get in too many other places. I get high marks for getting great guests, 
and Jack, you let them talk. And you get a Bill Bonds, a Dick Enberg, Dick Vitale, Lou Holtz. You don't have to ask these people many questions. They just go. And, and you just let them go. And uh, I'm the beneficiary. So you came up with this idea, and Mike Feezy said go with it. You came up with a name, though, a pretty unique name. What's, what's the name of the program? Anything is possible. And uh, uh, Why did you come up with that name? What's, what does that well, mean? Well, I've always, from my mom, from Ernie Banks, from watching Zig Ziglar over the years and others, I'm a great believer in motivational thinking and positive thinking. And uh, that's how I came up with the name. And we had Cardinal Mida about six months into the show. And I would end every show with, thanks for listening. Please tune in next week. Until then, I'm Jack Krasula. Thanks for listening. And remember, anything is possible. And in a Slovak word, spo. So Cardinal Mida's over here and he says, Jack, let's do that again. And let's add two words. I said, your eminence, what two words? With God, anything is possible. And to WJR's credit, they've always encouraged me to talk about our faith. And in some cases, we've had atheists on the show. But um, we're, we're not hindered to talk about a person's faith. And I think that when you have the time that you have to get into the background, to get into what's going on, the time you take ahead of the show to get to know them a little bit better, how, how big a difference do you think that makes in the, in the quality? And it's a great quality show, but how, how, how much more important is that than just getting the guest out of the green room and <laughs> what's he talking about? Well, it's not an interview. It's a conversation. My job is to make you look good and for you to inspire people. And every, Gary, everybody has a story, right? Everybody, every viewer out there tonight has a story, and it's an amazing story. And my job is to make them comfortable and just let them share. One of the things I read somewhere is that you can be the greatest conversationalist or be appeared to be the greatest by asking people about themselves. Yes. What do people like to talk about most? themselves and they love to hear the, the most beautiful word in the world is their name and ask them who what where when and why you know very open-ended questions and let them go when you first started the show what was the <laughs> I was feeling? awful I was awful <laughs> okay tell me about it okay yeah. well the first guest was the late great Eleanor Jositis you know the co-founder of Hocus Hope Hocus Hope yep we have a one minute intro then we have a seven minute, three, 10 minute segment. So we have to have some exits and some re-entries. I had never done that before, Gary. So I had no idea how to do it. So they had to teach me on the fly how to do it. And the first couple of shows, I would tell you, all right, in this segment, I'm gonna ask you these three questions, okay? I don't do that anymore. And I told Eleanor that, and she said, well, Jack, that first question, that's dumb. <laughs> Don't ask me that one. The second one is even dumber, <laughs> and the third one is even dumber. Ask me this, this, this. Three quarters of the way show through, I says, Eleanor, what am I even here for? <laughs> you're giving me all the questions, you're giving me all the answers. Two minutes after the show aired, Mike Feezy called me at home. Jackie, we're going to have breakfast, you and I, tomorrow, <laughs> 7 o'clock at Crumpets. <laughs> and they had to teach me how to do it. And uh, the second guest was Ernie Harwell, you know, the most beloved man in the history of Michigan. He knows radio. He knows radio, yeah. right? And uh, Ernie Banks was my hero, was the third guest. And so those people carried me, carried me. There was one time, five, six years into it, they said, Jack, you should tell your story. So I went to my friend Mort Krim <laughs> and asked him if he would be the host. And Gary, he would ask me a question and I would give the answer and then he would wrap it up in a little bow for a couple of seconds and then traverse to the next question. It was masterful. And every time he did it, I thought, that, well, that was unbelievable. How'd he do that? And then Jack, you know, shut up and <laughs> listen to the question. 
and three quarters of the way through, I says, I sure hope Mike Feasy's not listening tonight because the BS <laughs> Jack Rasool is long gone <laughs> and Mort Krim is the host of Anything is Possible. So, so it's, you got to be, a, whatever it is, you got to be a student and get as good as you can. I think listening to, to the guest as they are talking, uh, my questions that I think about ahead of time change. And by the end, it's like a trial. I'm yes, in a trial, yes. in a battle. First shots fired, everything changes. Yes. How do you find that ad adaptation? How do you do that? That was an acquired skill. I recall at that breakfast with Mike Feasy after the first one, he said, Jackie, it's great if you want to ask her about her mom and dad, but if she says that the dad killed the mom and your next question is, where'd you go to school? You got to forget about that and say, well, tell me about how mom killed the dad. You know, you, the questions have to be written in pencil and you really have to listen to what the person's saying and then create the next question based upon that. And always think, what would the people listening or watching tonight want to hear? I'm a little selfish. I ask questions I think I'd like to know the answers to, and hopefully I have some interaction with my guests. But that, I never thought about it that way. You learn as you go and you develop your techniques. And so comparing show one to three to show 500 mm -hmm. to show 900, you notice a change. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I've been blessed. The guests that God have given me is unbelievable. These people are pros. They've done it over and over and over. When you get a politician or a motivational speaker or a, a sports analyst or whatever, it really doesn't matter what questions you ask them, Gary. They've got their specific 10 points. Lou Holtz gets paid $70,000, $30,000 a speech. He's got his three points, 10 points, eight points, and he's going to get those out. And he, as a speaker, has his ideas that he wants to get yes. ahead. He is a, an interviewer's dream yes. because you say hello, and then all of a sudden, yes. thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember George Burns and Gracie Ellen when yep, they were kids? Yep. George Burns would come on and say, Gracie, say good evening to the people. 59 minutes later, Gracie, it's time to go say good night to the people. And that's all George ever said, I recall, on any show. And Gracie just talked. And they had such a good rapport and they yes. could do that and that the, the, the golden age of television type of thing. I, I remember that. A little. So the station, the WJR, mm -hmm. the, you know, again, I started out with a great voice of Great Lakes. It's an icon in my mind. I always wanted to be in broadcasting. What's it like working in a place that is history, 100 years old? It's one of the 10 or 12 iconic radio stations in America. When Mike Feasy took that huge chance on me, I had no idea the stature of that show. But to go there once a week and walk past the late, great Frank Beckman, Paul W. Smith, Dick Hafner, Steve Courtney, Mitch Album. Now, Kevin Dietz, you know, it, on and on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The technology has changed a little bit, Ooh. too, since you started 19 yeah. years ago. Talk about that real quick. J.P. McCarthy. Right. Legendary. He had this focus show every, at noon every day. He would have President Gerald Ford come into the studio. Then L. Kaline would come into the studio. Then the head surgeon at Beaumont would come to the studio. Then, you know, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas would come in. Just this wide spectrum. Then he'd have the president of GM come in. He didn't have the Google, like we do, to study up on these people. He had to research it. He, Paul Harvey, you know, with the newspapers, etc. And that man did that every, JP did that every day. With this Google, there's so many articles, interviews, question and answer sessions. It's unbelievable what's out there about these people. The Google is good, but the interaction, the per yeah. interpersonal interchange, I think, is what's really critical. Yes, yes. And the technology, how they used to have to splice, you know, when they missed. It's the first segment is one minute long. We have news. 
No. We come on. I give a one-minute intro. Then we have the news. Then we have commercials. We come back. If it's 58 seconds, the producer, the magician, Mark Blackwell, just turns this little knob and all the words expand. If it's a minute and three seconds, it just this way and the words contrast. If I mispronounce a word at the end of the segment, Jack, repeat that word and he just sticks it in there. It's unbelievable, the technology. When you're talking about technology and commercial breaks, we're taking one right now. We got a little few words about Kiwanis, don't go away. Back with one of my favorite guests of all time so far, <laughs> Jack Rasula, talking about radio, anything with God, anything is possible. Don't go away, words about Kiwanis. And when we come back, he's going to ask me who have been one or the two of the greatest guests. Come back. He's a fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Harvey was unbelievable. You know, the rest of the story. Yep. Welcome back to Kiwana Talk. I'm your host, Gary Gardner. On this episode, a very special Anything is Possible episode. And with Jack Crisula, Anything is Possible. I'll give the ultimate with God, Anything, anything is, is possible. possible. Jack, welcome back to the show. You have not only been a radio person, you have penned uh, a work. Well, myself and Dale Buss. Okay. You know, an award-winning author. And we chose 15 special guests, and we profile these 15 guests. And uh, the book is entitled, With God, Anything is Possible, 15 chapters about these 15 phenomenal human beings. There's a lot of phenomenal people. How did you come up with the 15 that made the top list there? There are 15 people that I walked away with saying, wow. It's an honor just to be around that person. I'd love to spend hours with that person. Um, people that I admire, not necessarily famous or wealthy, but just phenomenal human beings. Did you Google them or did you get the information from them or how, how did you, and you and your, your co-author write it, how did you find the information? Well, we used the Google yeah. to research. Um, we listened to the show that we had, and uh, then I said, Dale, we've got to make sure we talk, talk about this, and we've got to make sure we talk about this, and he's a masterful writer, and uh, I give him all the credit. If, and it's 15 individuals with God, and, and who are you, did you have Einstein on there? No, 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 no. this is, <laughs> the, the cover is a painting that the maestro Doug West did for me, and we entitle this The Dreamers. And these are a series of people that thought outside the box and transformed the world based upon the dreams and their visions. So that's the cover. The people that you include in the book, they all have stories. They've all changed themselves. They've changed their communities. They've maybe changed the world in some way. How do you, when you hear that story, does it, how exciting do you get about that? How... I live for that. I live for that. I, uh... In life today, the only constant is change. And in life today, you have to keep learning while you're earning. And the, one of the best ways to stay young is to love other people and be inquisitive. Always want to learn new things. And uh, I get to do this every week, Gary. Unbelievable. You've, you've had 900 plus people. Who are your top two that you would say that were the most memorable, best, whatever that you rank in, the, in not in any particular order? Number two, and we had him three times, Peter Pretorius from South Africa. Not the Blade Runner, you know, that right, right, right. killed the girl. This guy was a tobacco farmer a Formula One race car driver, and a wild man by his own admission. And one day in 1984, he hears that there's a, 
a feeding center in Mozambique. There was starvation going on and there's a feeding center. So he has somebody fly him in a little puddle jumper for the day. The guy was going to come back that night, pick him up. And Peter gets there, 30,000 people and no food. And the first thing that happens is a mom comes up and says, would you hold my infant son while I try to find water? So he's holding the little baby, and the baby starves to death in his arms. So here comes the mom back. He's got to give the mom her dead son. Jack, every day I saw three, four hundred people starve to death. The, the man didn't come back for ten days with the plane. Peter's wife, Anne, thought he died. There was no phones or anything. Three, four hundred people a day starving to death in this feeding center. There were no food. He says, Jack, every eight seconds in the world, somebody starves to death today. That's 10,800 a day. Not goes to bed hungry, starves to death. So for 10 days, he's screaming at God, get me out of here. What's wrong with you? Why you let these babies be poor? And what, God, what are you doing? And on the 10th day, God says, Peter, do what you can to feed them, and I'll help you. And so now, 40 years later, in seven African countries, JAM, Joint Aid Management, feeding a million kids every day. Jack, you give me one Starbucks a month, five bucks a month. I can feed a kid for $50 a year every day. Peter Pretorius. Why was he not number one based on that story? Ooh. Who's number one? <laughs> He's now 42. Four times we've had him on. First time he was 23 years old. He's this generation's Billy Graham. He has reached 2.7 billion people with a B. If it be true that we have to be God's arms and legs, and that's how God works. He, Gary, he uses you to try to reach me if you're open to it and if I'm open to it as well. But we have to be God's arms and legs. I've never met a man that does that better than Nick Vujicic, who was born with no limbs. Mm. They call him the limbless evangelist. He goes all over the world. 2.7 billion, you know, God's ways are not our ways. He uses the least likely to do his greatest work. Here he takes a kid with no, born with no limbs. I says, if God offered you the limbs today, Nick, what would you say? I'd say, God, I don't need them. Now, Jack, I do have a pair of shoes in my closet, just in case. <laughs> He's got a beautiful oriental wife, two sons, and twin daughters who are perfect. Um, phenomenal humor. Jack, I've now met 30 people in the world I can wrestle with. Um, he's unbelievable. He was in Peru recently, a couple years ago. And he has a handler. They put him up on the stage. And after the stage, they gave him a room behind the stage. And he's calming down, and the door is open. And here comes four guys with Uzis, submachine guns. And he says, was it something I said? And they part, and here's a guy in a suit. And he says, Nick, my name is Pedro Castillo. And I'm the dictator of Peru. I didn't want to come tonight. My wife forced me. True everywhere. <laughs> yeah, been there, yeah. Uh, and Nick, uh, I don't believe in God. And after listening to you, I still don't believe in God. But I have to tell you. And then Jackie puts his arm on me, and he said, later this week in our Congress, we're going to vote on a bill that I'm the sponsor of. I'm the one pushing it. And basically, the bill says that if a woman's pregnant and we know something's wrong, we'll terminate that pregnancy. And Nick... After listening to you tonight, I realize I was wrong. 
and I'm going to go on national TV tomorrow, and I'm going to tell my people I was wrong. Wow. Nick Vujicic. But with God, anything is possible. With God. You have, we're down to our last three or four minutes, Jack. You have a speaker series. Yes. Talk about that and when, hmm. where that is. Three years ago, God said, Jack, I want you to bring one phenomenal guest a month to Detroit and let them speak. And we do it at St. John's Resort, beautiful, in Plymouth, five mile and back. And uh, once a month, it's free. Uh, we serve the world's greatest carrot cake afterwards. And uh, in March, we have Andreas Widmer coming. As an 18-year-old kid, he got a job with a security company. He became a Swiss guard, and he met John Paul II, St. John Paul II the Great. And for the next three years, he went all over the world with him, everywhere. How did you get in this, into the St. John's? What was the idea? And Well, it's... Uh, it's now owned by the Pulte Foundation. Okay. They bought it from the Archdiocese. You know, it was an old seminary, 200 acres. They got the golf course, which they've redone. Uh, the, chapter, ch the chapel has 250 weddings. They got the hotel. It's a spectacular place. And so I just decided, let's do it there. In all honesty, the first two years we did it at the Shrine Basilica, you know, at right. 11 Mile in Woodward. But uh, this season three, we took it out to St. John's Resort information people want to get it website where, what is it aip speaker series or you can email me jack dot krasula k-r-a-s-u-l-a at trust in us trust in us dot com aip speaker series series anything is possible. possible speaker series yes and magic of television look it's, it's right there <laughs> Isn't that amazing how that works? Yes. And your other side, the, the email Jack Rasulo directly. Yes. You know, over over years, Jack, I've had many guests. I've, I've, I've interviewed, I've been blessed to be able to do that. The um, personality, uh, your heart, it, it's, it's, it's there. It's just amazing. And it, you express it on the radio. I, I've never met you before, but I've listen to your voice, I thought I knew you, and I think I'd, your listeners do know you because of the way you come across. It's great. I've been blessed with enthusiasm, and that's one of the greatest gifts you can have in life, enthusiasm. And as you said at the beginning, I have a face, you said you have a face for radio, <laughs> my face is for radio, but it's a great pleasure to be on television, a particularly a great pleasure to have been on television with Jack Crisula. With God, anything is possible. God Jack, bless. Thank you very much. Been an honor. My pleasure. Thank you for watching Kiwana Talk. We'll be again, back again soon. Don't forget, anything is possible. But with God at the beginning, with God, anything is possible. Jack Rasula, viewers, see you later. All right. <laughs> All right. Do it again next week? No, that's a good rehearsal. <laughs> we can do it for real now. Okay. <laughs>